Hi, it's Carrie. In part four of Searching School, we will look at incorporating subject headings into our searches. Different platforms have different ways of indexing content. They usually use some format of subject heading to make records more findable, despite variations in terminology. Using subject headings is a little bit like using a hashtag in social media. You know how you find that one tag, and you want to see other posts with that tag, so you click on it? That's essentially how subject headings work. Subject headings are useful because they can help account for variations in spellings, synonyms, homonyms, and British versus American English. Consider that there are terms like pediatrics, behavior, leukemia, edema, and more that have very different spellings depending on whether you're using British or American English. Subject headings can help us find literature regardless of the terminology used in the record simply by virtue of the record being indexed with the subject heading. Subject headings are platform or database specific. Aside from PubMed and the Cochrane Library, which both use MeSH, medical subject headings, every platform's subject headings are different. But mostly what works in one platform won't be the same for another. There can be confusion because different platforms call their subject headings different things. You may hear it called subject headings, a thesaurus, index terms, a descriptor, or a controlled vocabulary. PubMed has MeSH, medical subject headings, Embase has MTree, PsycInfo uses the APA thesaurus, CINAHL, the cumulative index to nursing and allied health literature, uses CINAHL headings. To add to the confusion, some platforms, like Scopus and Web of Science, don't really use subject headings at all. As a best practice, searchers should include all representative subject headings in a search. Let's look at our example from Part 2. Aromatherapy to treat postoperative nausea and vomiting. In PubMed's MeSH, there's a subject heading for aromatherapy and a subject heading for postoperative nausea and vomiting. It is necessary to include them both. If there were related or previously used subject headings that you consider important, you should use those as well. You can see previously used subject headings in the MeSH entry. For example, previous indexing for the MeSH term aromatherapy includes alternative medicine, odors, and oils, comma, volatile. Let's do a little search just based on subject headings alone. We'll go to PubMed. We'll go to the MeSH database under Explore. Search for aromatherapy. Review the entry. And click Add to Search Builder and search PubMed over here in the upper right-hand corner. I consider this testing a term to make sure that it runs properly and retrieves results. Our next step is to look at the other platforms or databases we've chosen to search and see if they have corresponding subject headings. They might not be the same as MeSH, but they might be similar. When you're building your own search or peer reviewing someone else's, make sure that the appropriate subject headings are represented. If new subject headings have been introduced to the platform since the initial search, the new subject headings should be added to any search updates. If a platform does not have a corresponding subject heading, you should make a note of it and be sure to include them as keywords so that the term will be retrieved. That's what we'll talk about in part five, keywords. <laughs>